Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095, Basic Algebra. We're continuing our discussion on section 6.3. This is part two of slope-intercept form. Now in 6.2, we introduced intercepts. And in the first part of 6.3, we talked about slope. Well, now we're going to merge the two together and talk about slope-intercept form of an equation. Now, we've discussed standard form, which is ax plus by equals c for a linear equation, two variables, both to the first power. Slope-intercept is the same thing. It's just that the equation is rearranged algebraically. And by rearranging it this way, it helps us to define the behavior of a line. The first thing we're going to look at is this value here. In the first part of this video, we defined that m is essentially the slope. That coefficient of x is the slope of the line or the steepness. Is it increasing or decreasing, positive or negative? It tells us the behavior of the line. This value here, we found this value, but we didn't actually define it yet. This value denotes the y-intercept. So when we say slope-intercept, we're specifically talking about the y-intercept, not just any intercept. So slope-intercept form of an equation tells us the slope and the y-intercept. Well, how does it tell us the y-intercept? Well, if we think about it, to find a y-intercept, x is always 0. Well, if I plug 0 into this equation, 0 times anything is 0. 0 plus anything is that value y equals b. So when x is 0, the y-intercept is the value b, 0b. And we can see that value in this equation. So by being able to put an equation in this form, it can tell us some information immediately by just looking at it. I will know the slope, and I will know when x is 0, y is this value. So I will know at least one point, 0 and that value, the y-intercept. So let's look at the example that we looked at in the first part of this video. We had y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. And we graphed it by finding its intercepts and its slope. And if we noticed, the slope was this coefficient y equals m, which was our slope, as the coefficient of x. And then we have this one value. Well, that 1, if we recall, when we found the y-intercept, we found 0, 1 to be our y-intercept. y-intercept of 0, 1. So our b value is 1. So we can see how this is in that form. So if I look at this equation, I can say, oh, well, the slope is negative 1 half. It's going to decrease at a rate of 1 half. And it's going to cross the y-axis at the value of positive 1. And we can see that's the behavior of the graph without even graphing it. Now, let's actually look at an example. This one here, we have 2x minus 3y equals 6. This one is in standard form. But we want it in slope-intercept form so we can see the information or the behavior of the line before we graph it. And then we'll actually go ahead and graph it. Well, if we think about slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, essentially what this equation is is solving it for y. y equals these values. So I can take any equation in standard form and put it in the slope-intercept form by simply solving for y. Well, to solve for y, I have to get this variable out from this side of the equation to the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Well, here, it goes away, 2x minus 2x, no more x's. And negative 2x and 6, well, they're not like terms, so I can't combine them. So I'm just going to put the x1 first and the constant second. Now, because this is negative, it's negative 2x. And that was a positive 6, so I just wrote plus 6. Now, I want to get y by itself, so I have to eliminate that coefficient. Well, to eliminate a coefficient, I have to divide by negative 3 to eliminate a coefficient of negative 3. What I do to one side, I have to do to both sides, which means I have to divide both sides by that value. All the terms have to be divided by that value. So here, it reduces to 1. Here, I have negative 2 over negative 3. Well, negative over a negative is positive. 2 over 3 is 2 thirds. 2 thirds times that x. 
Now I have 6 over negative 3. Well, a positive over a negative is a negative. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now if we look at this, it is now in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So I can determine information right now. I know that the slope is 2 thirds. And I know the y-intercept, which is an ordered pair when x is 0, y is negative 2. The b value, this sign belongs to that value, so it's negative 2. With this information, I can graph it without even having to find any other point. I don't need to build a t table of values. I can actually use these two items to graph a linear equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this ordered pair, this point, my y-intercept. When x is 0, y is negative 2. So that's the value 0, negative 2. So I'm just going to label it on the graph. Now I can use the slope, because I know the slope is the average rate of change between any two points of this line. So I'm going to go from my point, I'm going to look at the change in y. From this point, this is a positive 2, so I'm going to go up 2. Over 3, well, 3 says go positive 3 in the x value. Change in y over change in x. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and I would be at my next point. If I want more points, just to be sure, I would look at that slope. It says 2 in the y, 3 in the x, 2 over 3. Or I could think of it another way. If we go back to here, we know that a negative divided by a negative gave us that positive 2 thirds. Well, what if I went down 2? I would then have to go back 3. A negative over a negative is still a positive 2 thirds. And we can see all of these values are still in a nice straight line. So I can go ahead and I can draw that line. So I was able to graph the line. And the only information I really had was one point and the slope. So I could go up 2 to the right 3. Or I could go down 2, back 3. Because keep in mind that this and this are the same value. So don't make any sign errors. Just watch that and be careful. All right, what if we're not given an equation of a line? What if we're asked to find the equation of the line, but we're given certain information? Well, here it tells me the y-intercept is 0, 5. When x is 0, y is 5. That is the definition of a y-intercept. And the slope is negative 1 third. We have a slope of negative 1 third. So if I'm going to write this equation, I have all the information I need to put it into slope-intercept form. I know the slope. So y equals mx plus b. Well, m is negative 1 third as the coefficient of x. And b is a positive 5. I was able to write this in slope-intercept form with just given the slope and the y-intercept. This one here, I'm told the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. And m is 0. If you do not recognize this right away, You'll see it when you put it into slope-intercept form. And that's why slope-intercept is such a powerful tool. y equals the slope as the coefficient of x plus b, while plus a negative is just subtraction minus 3. So we have our slope and y-intercept. But if we simplify this, well, 0 times anything is 0. 0 minus 3 is just 3. This is the same thing as y equals negative 3. If you recall, this is a special kind of line. This one here is a horizontal line. y is a constant. It never changes. So if I wanted to graph that, I know I'm going to draw a horizontal line that passes through negative 3. It's going to cross that y-axis at negative 3. That's why it's the y-intercept. All right, what about this here? It says undefined slope, and I'm going to underline that. Undefined slope. Well, that means it's not increasing. Nor is it decreasing. It's actually doing both at the same time. It doesn't make sense. That's why we call it undefined. Well, <clears throat> we're not given a y-intercept. We're given an x-intercept. Well, an undefined slope means we're dividing by 0. And the denominator is our change in x. The change in x is 0. So if our change in x is 0, x equals a constant value. x never changes. 
Well, how do I know what that x value is? How can I write the equation of this line? Even though it's not going to be in slope-intercept form, I can still write its equation. This is the only type of line that does not work in this equation because there is no y value. It doesn't depend on y. But how do I determine the x value? Well, I was given a point, and if x never changes, whatever the x value is, it will never change. This is the equation of a vertical line. All right, let's look at one more example that we might run into. And then we'll look into an application. What if we're given the graph of a line and asked to find the equation of a line in slope-intercept form? So the first thing, I want to find the slope, that coefficient of x. Well, what I'd like to do is determine what Two points can I determine off of this graph? Well, I can see it passes through this point where the two lines intersect. And if I follow this down, well, it's close there, but it doesn't actually cross. But I see, oh, OK, it crosses right here. So now I can determine that slope. Well, how do I get from this point to this point? What's my average rate of change? I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I go over 1, 2. Down 5 over 2. That is my change in y. I had to go down 5. And my change in x was 2 to the right, negative 5 over 2. I just determined the slope by choosing two points on the graph. Now, how do I finish it? Well, I have to find the y-intercept. And just by chance, my y-intercept is where it crosses. This is the, one of the points I chose. Well, what is that point when x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4? So we can choose, uh, well, it's not choosing. It's already chosen for us. The value at which it crosses the y-axis is the b value. We're above the x-axis, four spots, positive 4. So we were able to determine that from the graph, our change in y over our change in x, that's our slope, and then our y-intercept. And that's how we write it in slope-intercept form using the graph. All right, so where do we see applications of uh, linear equations in slope and intercepts? Well, the slope is something that we use on a regular basis. Maybe you think of uh, driving to work or driving to school or what, wherever you may be driving. This graph actually represents distance. If we recall when we worked in Chapter 5, application problems, distance equals rate times time, or rate equals distance over time, and slope is an average rate of change, miles per hour. Well, that describes a rate, miles over hours is miles per hour. And we can see that's what this graph actually describes, an average rate. So as an example, let's say uh, I'm at a friend's house, and I leave his house, and I have to go to the gas station. So I was driving and covering some miles over some time. So I can figure out what my average rate of change was, what my average speed was after I left my friend's house. But I had to stop at the gas station. Well, while I'm gassing up, notice the miles isn't changing. It's not increasing or decreasing. My distance, miles, is remaining constant during time. While I'm at the pump, I'm gassing up. I'm not actually moving. So my rate is constant at 0. And then we can look here. Well, maybe I uh, get in my car, and I leave the gas station, and I drive to my destination. So we can see I could determine my average rate of speed, or my average rate, by miles over hours in a graphic form here and just understanding what slope is. Another application to slope is maybe, uh, maybe I work on commission. And for every sale, I get so much money. Well, I want to determine how much money I'm going to make for every item that I sell. Well, in this example, I know if I sell no items, I make no money. So that's a good point to start with. I also know maybe I sell 100 items and I get $875. That would be maybe you know, a good week's work if uh, I sold 100 items. But what is it that I get paid per item? Well, I can use slope to determine that. If we recall what slope is, slope is the change in y over the change in x. Well, if we have 
two points, I can find the difference in y over the difference in x. And if I look here, I do have two points. So I'm actually going to find that slope. Slope is the change in y, and I'll call this point 2 and this point 1, 875 minus 0. Well, 875 minus 0 is just 875. And 100 for my x value minus 0 for my x value, while well, 100 minus 0 is 100. And now we could just do this division. Well, 875 divided by a nice number like 100 gives me 8.75. Hopefully, we recall we moved that value. And since our profit, our y value was in dollars, I get $8.75 per over the number of sales. So I get $8.75 for every item that I sell. Now I know my rate of pay, my average rate of pay. So this was just one example. So definitely keep practicing, apply this, try to understand the concept, and keep working at it. Thank you for watching.